Put some hot sauce on my burrito, baby. You know you look good to me. Mm. Oh, that looks good. Just hold on, Craig. I'm coming, son. I'm coming. Put some hot sauce on my burrito, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the muffler, Ryan Bruckner, I'm Mike. Big Tobacco, Ryan. This is my intro. Welcome to Squared Circle Cinema. A film, a wrestler, a discussion. We have rolled back the clocks. You know what else I'm rolling back, Ryan? How am I doing today, buddy? You know what else I'm rolling back? My fast food frequency. I haven't had fast food in two and a half weeks, pal. Is that some sort of accomplishment that I should you don't think I think okay for in your opinion be impressed by actually if you're not impressed I'm flattered because I would assume you would contribute me as a person that eats fast food a lot so I think you would would be supportive when I mention that I haven't had fast food in like two weeks do you have fast food like on when you're not trying to cleanse yourself um, do you have fast food like every few days when I'm not or? trying to uh, no, no, but, but I'll have it twice a week. And by fast food, I'm talking about El Pollo Loco. Let's say, does eh, that count? If you're going to love me some chicken avocado burrito or the Chipotle chicken burrito they got there. Mm. Love it. El Pollo Loco is kind of a tweener, right? It, it's like, if you want to, you know, be on the healthier side of fast food, you go to El Pollo Loco. Yeah, but still, I mean, I'm, I'm getting, I'm uh, I'm sorry. The chicken is processed somehow. You can't move. I mean, no matter how organic they, cook they it, claim they it cook is. They cook it right there. I see them. They but have them do, right on the yeah, fire that's grill. True. But how do they transport all that chicken? Just, I what mean, it's mean? not how like from transport? farm to grill, right? I mean, yeah. But you're right. They are just I mean, cooking whatever it there. chicken you're making at home is probably you're right. worse. And here's the real test. But you don't even make chicken at home, probably. Do you? I. Um, I don't make chicken, no. What I do is I purchase the rotisserie chicken. Uh, yeah. I do most of my shopping at John's, but then my special little treat is I go to Vaughn's right across the street and get my rotisserie chicken because they have a good variety. It's only a dollar more. It's like seven ninety nine to eleven ninety nine, And they got turkey. They got lemon, pepper chicken. So that's like my variety for the week. And I have that for dinner on Monday and Tuesday. Okay. And then Wednesday, I make um, a sandwich and soup. Thursday is omelet night, and I'm really excited about omelet night. And I've been doing this the last couple of weeks, saving a lot of money. You've had one of my omelets, right? I One time you made me something that you called an omelet, exactly. and I ate it. And you're just like, it's really more of an egg scramble. <laughs> it, it was, and the cheese that you put in it was not melted. It was just like a cube of cheese that no, I found. No, there was a variety of cheese. That I found That was the special there. treat. The that was like the <laughs> almond in the bread pudding. You put a baby bell yes. cube. Yeah, a cube and I found of it the laughing cow un- cheese. Unmelted. No, it's a spreadable. That was like the special treat. And I gave you the special treat because I like you so much. Here's the problem. I am good at cooking omelets. Like I hit a home run last Thursday. I just really underperform when I'm cooking for other people. I, mm. I I did a terrible job. I like like the the egg was runny. And I overcooked it, and like I got it down to a science when I'm doing it by myself, and it's always a win, you know. And I'm grilling up ham. I got uh, some zucchini and mushrooms and onions, and uh, I'd like yeah. to challenge you to an omelet off. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Okay. Yeah. You're on. I'm not even. I was just about to tell you my secret, my secret weapon, but maybe I'm not going. Okay, I'll tell you anyway. It's the fat. In plain yogurt, stuff that curdles up top there, dip that in the egg instead of whole milk, and then whip it. And well, <laughs> this is so you're you take pride in omelet your omelet talk. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know if you make the omelet properly. What are you talking about? I don't know if you actually do the technique. This is the technique. Based upon, I have the- a foot. Fl- 
Based upon what you served me, that was not an omelet, sir. No, no, I just biffed it. I just biffed it. So then I messed, you know, because of that, I was like, all right, I'll just make them scramble eggs here then. No, I have a flat, nonstick pan, three okay. eggs, whip those suckers up. I told you about, I told you about the, the fat and, and the yogurt that I use for a dairy product. Okay. Lay it out. Let it cook. It still starts popping. While I'm cooking my ingredients on the side in my cast iron skillet, right? Then I put all of those yummy, yummy ingredients uh, on one side. Then I add sharp cheddar, cheese, and then I flip it over. And then I flip from pan to plate. Okay. So you get the bottom okay, side. Okay, so it okay. looks nicer because, you know, if you, it's always, I always biff the fold a little bit. And then if you just flip it upside down, it looks like a, it's a better okay. presentation. That's an omelet. That's how I cook my omelets. That and they're pretty darn omelet. good. And I blew it when... You described an omelet. Congratulations. Yeah, that took five minutes to talk about an omelet. Good Lord. Well, anyway. I can see that you bought a new recorder. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I thought I was going to get away with it. <laughs> no. I was like, I'm just not no. going to mention. I was going to talk about it on the air. I'm not going to mention this. You had a near. I'm just going to. Total breakdown in a public place. The case. On the last episode, and put the recorder on the table, and I'm not gonna see. And you said say by a the word. next episode, uh, this will be a new recorder, man. Here's the thing, man. The it's the SD card. I got a new SD card. This sucker purrs right now. Works great. Right. Was I struggling with it today? No. It's I, I'm gonna get a new one. These new H7s, though, they're like 500 bucks, dude. So I think I'm gonna get an H6N, uh, which is around 250. And I apologize that I haven't purchased it yet i'm just waiting for my christmas bonus because oh. i've already spent all of more more's money thank you very much more more oh you're that's grandma? what we call yeah yeah we we call her that now like Your all christmas of a sudden bonus that's nice yeah so no we're what if you by year's enrolled? end we will be <laughs> having a new recorder and i think it, it it might be an adjustable one so i could change frequencies on on, on both channels what if you so get enrolled cool. in the jelly of the month club instead uh-huh what if you get enrolled in the jelly of the month club instead I don't know what you're talking about. It's a Christmas vacation reference, man. He's oh, waiting yeah. his, for his Christmas bonus. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, he can I'm put sorry. it in the pool. Right. Sorry. And he ends up getting enrolled in the Jelly of the Month Club instead. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't pick up. It's only November. All right? I'm not thinking straight. <laughs> well, how the hell was your Halloween? My Halloween uh, was solid. I went as a lonely bachelor in this year. Uh, that was a prepared joke. Um, it was... You know, I didn't do anything. It's on a Wednesday. I live in an apartment. I do a damn thing. I did see your pictures, though, and um, I was impressed. A lot of detail in your Post Malone uh, f- at work. And then yeah. you, you, and ca- you and Cassie took on the baby as a lawn gnome. And were you guys like grass or something? No, we were an amazing race team. Oh, so yeah. on the amazing race, there's always like a leg of the race where you have to find the Travelocity gnome. And you have oh. to carry the gnome with you. And if you don't have the gnome with you at the finish line, you, you got to go back and get the gnome. Wow. So he was our gnome. We actually had like a little envelope. Did anyone get that reference? No. Yeah. Nobody did. That's pretty not obscure. A, not too many people watching The Amazing Race anymore, I guess. Are you? I love The Amazing Race. Yeah. It's just I don't have CBS... Because I'm a cord cutter and I don't get it on my antenna here. So you're watching. So on they they got it on Hulu, Daily but like motion. they got it way, like they they're like three year old episodes. So, oh, you know. Okay. So I'm pretty much so caught up. Is it just really? It, 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 what's so enrapturing about it? It's fun. It's like uh, first it's of just all, two couples going, like looking for a, a lawn gnome. No, there's a bunch of different teams. It's not only couples. They all have different personalities and stories. Just They're a bunch all, of dads looking for a G spot. They all strategize against each other. They're traveling around the world, so you get to see like all of that stuff. Sometimes they go to third world countries and it, like they're just, like freaking out and being absolutely racist. Hmm. And it's fun. It's a fun just show. Just a bunch of broads looking for a shoulder. And there's just there's like sometimes people will be in the lead and then they'll like forget <gasps> something and, and then, then you're there. They were like the favorite to win and then they get eliminated. Oh, like, wow. Oh, last minute. Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah. It's very compelling TV. Are they all self-contained? 
each episode is a, a new challenge or is each episode a new leg a leg and so it's an entire so, yeah, season and somebody the same gets cast of course yeah somebody gets eliminated every week show on the planet somebody gets eliminated every week but sometimes uh-huh. there's a non elimination leg so you have like a favorite team that you're like ah oh, they're going to get eliminated oh. and then the host is like i got some news for you wow this is a non elimination leg oh my you're god you're still in the race and then they're like, oh, thank God. Do they decide that, oh. though, afterwards? They're like, oh, but America loves this couple. We can't, you know, we can't. Uh, oh, I don't know what the, the producers ex- actually do. Oh, you don't? Um, well, anyway, what was really funny, I came across a guy that had a fear of gnomes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Guy, Interesting. They were, like, sitting outside giving out candy, and uh, we came up. And he was like, you know, I, I actually am afraid of gnomes. And I'm like, really? Wow. Would you be afraid of a gnome that walked right up to you? And I put my son on the ground and he actually kind of like, <gasps> wait, kind but, of like, so you just randomly brought up that he's up. afraid of gnomes. Well, I thought he, he knew saw, that he saw that my son was a gnome. Oh, but I thought you were surprising him with the no, walking but I put, gnome. I, I was holding Owen, yeah, and I and put him on the ground and him? let him walk up to him. Did you really say that to him? Yeah. Oh, this must be freaking you out there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. And it he actually funny. had a reaction? Like, <gasps> wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that was fun. I love Halloween in my neighborhood. If I ever move, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to scout out where I move on October 31st just to yeah. see what goes on. You know what I did? And it's kind of sad and kind of lonely. But I drove around, snaked around Chandler in Burbank, Chandler Boulevard, because there mm-hmm. are some, like, people are in the industry there. Like, they go all out. Oh, that's nice. Flo- fog machines, which was kind of dangerous because yeah. it was obstructing my view <laughs> while I was driving. So I just kind of snaked around looking at all the houses in my car, you know, which is kind of sad. Mm-hmm. But I, I had walked around there last year, and um, it was game seven of the world's game six of the world series and like you had said where people were projecting their screens outside because they're just sick and tired of going at the door and missing the game um same kind of same kind of idea in in burbank so that was like my halloween experience and i took the back way through the la zoo to get home and it was dark and spooky spooky but it was all alone it's all by myself because halloween was on a wednesday this year and i didn't get to spend it with my niece who was this pirate it's most Costco has some incredible Halloween costumes, man. Oh. The intention, I thought my sister made it, but like the attention to detail in this pirate costume she got was was was. I was amazing. a pirate once. Yeah, but you were Post Malone this year. Post Malone and an amazing racer. Okay, so I knew that was Post Malone uh, instantly, right? But the Frankfurter and the Machete threw me off. I, I don't know. There was, was just like a, a machete a, a, in our Halloween view. party. Okay. Okay. And, and a coworker was a hot dog. And I thought it was all one. We took a picture together. Right. And I was slicing was her slicing up. Slicing the. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. Great detail in your costume. It was a good, 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 good job. Well, okay. So, but why is there. Uh, I love your workplace too, your workspace. Uh, you still got that Folgers Donnie blend from your, your birthday. Okay, on your call extension list, there's a picture of a sumo wrestler. What's that all about? It's a magnet. Okay. That I got in Japan. Oh. <laughs> in a- so it's holding... A, it's a magnet. Yeah. Say no more. Yeah. I thought it looked to me like like a six by nine photo or something like that. Like that. You, you just love this picture of these guys sumo wrestling. No, it's one of my souvenirs that I, I got, brought it to work. Okay. Uh, I ask the question, you answer the question, and yep. we can move on from that. I, th- there's no follow-up needed there. Uh, I like to watch horror movies that I've never seen before in the, the weeks leading up to Halloween, so I watched a few. Okay. I watched the Amityville Horror remake, which okay. was seen okay. that one. I remember enjoying Ra- it. I thought Ryan yeah. Reynolds was, was good. I feel like he wasn't ready for that role yet. Really? He, I, he wasn't quite there. I remember the turn being pretty... Horrifying. He's at his peak now. He would have been better of now. Skills. Okay. He was not there yet. He was still Van as far Wilder. as the friendly dad, or as far as the possessed. He dad. was pretty good as the friendly dad, but when he was sinister, I wasn't really buying it. He's no James Brolin, is what you're saying? Yeah, not not even close. Right. I watched the Belko experiment, which was you said pretty that was phenomenal. Damn good. That's on Netflix. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that. Um, 
James Gunn wrote it. I, looked, I just I just threw it I on. That it was on HBO. Pretty um, good. What was so Don't want to give it? too much away. It's kind of suspenseful. Like just uh, it's kind of like Battle Royale. Love Battle Royale. In an office. Okay, cool. Battle um, Royale meets The Office. <laughs> <laughs> nice mashup. That's cool. Um, Maybe I'll watch that tonight. And I watched Jason X. Right. Yeah. Which you said that you were like in a violent rage over. I back didn't when like it came at out. all. At all, because there was nothing scary about this now science fiction approach to our Jason Voorhees. But it just looked too different. I'd have to say uh, I don't find Jason scary at all. Really? I don't really. F- I mean, maybe I found him scary when I was a little kid. And I didn't know any better, but I don't find him scary. I, d- I did. I was drawn to those movies as a kid. And in fact, I'd probably seen as far as a collection of all of them. I've seen more Friday the 13th probably than A Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween. Well, there's just more. of No, no, but a any... lot more. I mean, like yeah. every Friday the 13th, I would yeah. turn on USA and just keep on keep keep watching yeah I the mean, fourth one is really good Crispin they, Glover's in it and it's yeah that's usually the really, one that people say is the best yeah one. it's 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 really well done and the acting is really good I've actually been listening to a podcast breaking down every Friday the 13th movie mm-hmm. it's uh with the uh, Paul Rust from uh, oh yeah well, from love yeah it's called in Invor- no no yeah <laughs> in Voorhees we trust with oh, cool. Gorley and Rust oh nice I would get into that. Yeah, it was pretty good. They were, they really loved the fourth one. But I just, I mean, I found him scary as a kid, for sure. Don't get me wrong. Like, Jason, I remember actually being in the theater. He's this indestructible and seeing, swamp man. Seeing the uh, teaser trailer for Jason Goes to Manhattan. Yeah. Where they, like... The the girl thinks like it's there's like a cute boy there. Mm-hmm. It turns around and it's Jason. Right, right, right. Yeah, in the, in the cabin. That I remember seeing that as a little kid. And yeah. I'm like, oh my god! Yeah. I, I wasn't have, ready for that. <laughs> they must have promoted the Dickens out of Jason Goes to Manhattan. It's like, oh my god! Now he's on a cruise ship, and that one dude just like boxing him. <laughs> and I don't remember anything else. <laughs> there's like a scene where a dude's like just keeps like. Goes full on Mike Tyson on him, and he actually like gets some good shots in, and then I think uh, they were on top of a, a skyscraper, and, and Jason just threw him off the, the skyscraper. So, um, some boobs in that movie too, and I really like uh, Jason really X. Like boobs. It was kind of like a Jason meets a sci-fi original. Yeah, that's movie, why I hated sci-fi it. There was channel. a couple chuckles in the beginning. I remember it wasn't. I it was like I was. I had a few beers, a few pumpkin beers. I, I had a good buzz going. That's it was cool. it was a fun time. Yeah. I'm not going to say it was a good movie, but it was fun camp. What more can you ask for? And you just got to be in the right headspace for that. And I'm sure if I was with you, I'd have a enjoyable time as well. I saw Halloween, man. I saw the new, the new, one. The new one. So now that you've seen three different Halloweens yeah. in Pretty yeah. close Inundated proximity. With Halloween's. Um, How does this compare? It was, it was good, but I went to the AMC Burbank 16 and I got the standard movie. Didn't go Dolby, didn't go IMAX. Two tickets, thirty eight dollars. Oh, Can you believe that? So it wasn't thirty eight dollars good, and it had a lot of flaws. What was really what kind of really bothered me the most, though, which I think was intentional. The the theme song has a slight variation. I think John Carpenter wrote it too. Yeah. The 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 the, rem- the, the cover. He did the newer version. Sorry. And there's just this slight. So instead, the bass line that was traditionally it's bum bum bum. This one goes bum bum bum. It's like just a half step down and it was just driving me <laughs> crazy i was just like tapping on my date's shoulders like can you believe that slight variation on the theme song is driving me crazy she was hey, like what hmm i have a water um she didn't say that i on the other hand got a cherry coke and a large popcorn because when you go into a popcorn movie you gotta get popcorn it was uh God, can I go into it a little bit, or am I is spoiling it, things? Like, I actually already read the spoilers, but maybe since it's 
in theaters now. You should probably hold <sighs> off for the audience. Um, I will say I've been Victor's seeing lots seen of pictures <laughs> of uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in like a tank top with long hair. Well, and here's the problem: she's still hot, man. She's still hot. She. I is got a thing hot. for Jamie Lee Curtis. She was soft in this movie. I thought she would be so much more strong and powerful. And she's training, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going heavy in spoilers here. If you want to edit it later, that's, that's she's right. waiting for him to come. She's wait, okay, her. I like I the that. idea she's that he's like been in incarcerated, a compound, right? She's in her house, which she's kind of renovated as like a tank, basically. She's been training all this time because in this she's world... She's kind of like uh, Sarah Connor almost, right? Right. But n- yes, that's the intention. Um, and But in this timeline, it takes place right after the original Halloween, which I like. And I like the idea that he's just been incarcerated this entire time. Um, great security at that place. And she's just been preparing. But like at the very end, she just makes all these mistakes. Like she's facing, like her back's facing the window. She's opening closet doors with her hands and dropping her weapon down. It's like if she's really been training, she would do. She has like this room upstairs with just mannequins. Like that's spooky. <laughs> if you got Michael Myers chasing at you, don't like take down the mannequins. That's spooky. You know, she just wasn't prepared for this thing she'd been training for forever. And they, like, just missing the mark is an understatement. They failed there. But there are definitely some Danny McBride moments where you're like, oh, he wrote that part. There are some excellent scenes, captivating, riveting scenes. There's a, a motion sensor light scene, which is breathtaking. I just had some severe issues with the end. And that's about it. But just like you said about Jason X, it was a fun experience. And I was having a ball throughout. It's better than Halloween 2? No. Okay, so no. then you'd rather stick with the original timeline. But you could kind of get away with it. You know, you could say he was captured. I mean, that was all the same day, you know, so. But uh, I loved Halloween, too. Um, is, is he her brother in this version? <laughs> I'm not going to say. Okay. I'm not going to say because I already said too much. Um, you know, I feel like I spoiled a little bit too much and I don't remember. Just kidding. Did I jump the gun? Hit it! <laughs> you didn't let me say hit it. That's like my favorite part of my segment. Yeah, I was uh, trying to, you know, jump the gun on you like you always do on me when you just oh. start recording when I'm not ready. Match of the month took place last week from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, home of one third of WrestleMania two. WWE presented Evolution, the first ever all female card. My match of the month has been considered by many to be the greatest WWE women's match of all time. In a last woman standing match for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Becky Lynch squared off against Charlotte Flair. They came into this match having wrestled like 11 times before, and the record's like 5-5-1. and So compelling. Whoa, you actually looked up the record? No, Michael Cole told us that. He said that? Michael Cole said that. I try not to listen to Michael Cole. (laughs) Yeah. I, he's got to go. He's got to go. There's just no like Ren- Renee Young takeover. Renee Young is excellent, and, I and he just s- talks over her. Yeah, and I okay. I don't know if you want to mention Crown Jewel at all, which just happened yesterday. But at least we'll, she was there. We'll get into it because I, I watched that freaking match, really? thinking that you watched the whole thing in its entirety. I you made thing. me watch. it. I didn't make you do anything. I was like, well, maybe I'll touch on it. But I just you said we got it. We I didn't gotta s- touch oh, on it. You, want me to you up said the text we got right to touch on it. We, I'm not going to queue up the text right now. But I didn't say that. Um, no, I was like, well, we did kind of, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ryan. Okay. A lot of botches too. No, it was really touching. I'll mention it. Oh, you should get uh, next Friday. You're watching. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All this has to go. (laughs) You should also give your take on the new Halloween as it compares to 1978 and 2007. Uh, no thanks. And I said, I can do that. This might be a 90 minute job. I also want to touch on Crown Jewel. But that was just me talking. I mean, you didn't have to say anything. 
to, if you touch on it, I need to be prepared. And then you said, you're watching Crown Jewel? <laughs> <laughs> Several question marks uh, and an exclamation. And I said, just the HBK match. Oh, my bad. I say, just the F- HBK match, of course. I think it's the of course where you felt obligated. We, we kind of set, set that, that one up earlier. earlier. And which... then you sent me the most horrific botch with Triple H and Undertaker I've ever seen. Um, and I said, yikes. Then and you said matches 30, matches 30 goddamn, 30 goddamn minutes. minutes. And that's why I didn't finish it. I started it. I watched the entrance. You said a lot of botches. I, so it made me think that you watched the entire thing. So I'm like today. Oh, no, this is just exclusively. Better watch this shit so I, I'm prepared for Mike. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. This was just exclusively on WrestleBotch on Instagram. Those are just the botches I was referring to. So I, I started it and I my intention was to finish it. Um, but I went to move my car and the match had ended. And I didn't feel like reactivating my Roku. <laughs> like my Roku <laughs> just shut off. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to turn the TV <laughs> off then. Good night. And I, I didn't restart it because then well, you got to like fast forward. and That's um, not your match of the month. So. But yeah. Um, Shawn I'm, Michaels looked good, though. I will say that. Um, okay. Match of the month. We're talking Evolution. Did you watch the entire card? I watched most of it. I fast forwarded a lot, but I watched the uh, finals of the Mae Young Classic. That okay. was a good match. Okay. Didn't see it. I watched the Becky Lynch uh, Charlotte match in its entirety, and I watched the Ronda Rousey uh, match. All right. So you well. watched at least. A and but part of the I've watched like of part of the battle royal, but I fast forwarded a lot through. I watched that the battle too. royal. Uh, the battle royal was 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 neat. I liked how the the youngins were gaining up on the legends yeah. at the beginning. I liked seeing Alundra Blaze in there in her weird ass outfit. Yeah, <laughs> I know she went with. Was that the same outfit? <laughs> it was like a she, strange looking outfit. She'd worn that outfit before. Um, let's see. I, I really like how this event was lit. Kind of had like a house show feel. Kind of like NXT. like Exactly like NXT. Um, and the crowd was as fired up as an NXT show, yeah. which was cool. Um, um, I almost like, I was nearly brought to tears by this match. I man. know what you're saying. This was oh, so I was brought so to good. tears after the match. Incredible match. And I was just on this emotional roller coaster that these two incredible women who have mastered the art of selling... Yeah, uh, put especially me Charlotte. Charlotte is Charlotte, like Charlotte her... when she came out of the when they piled the tables and chairs on yes. top of her and she burst out of there pissed. Yeah. She's like, you think that's going to stop me? Yeah. And just the way oh. she moans in a submission hold, just you yeah. feel it like, ah, like she's <laughs> grunting to the heavens. Yeah, it's it's spectacular. Yeah, just like uh, her dad, man. Yeah. Oh, God. Exactly. But oh, you know God. what? But it's totally <laughs> toned down yeah. isn't it it's it's more believable oh god <laughs> no oh boy <laughs> it reminded me of but uh, that's the kind of guy rick flair is though he's he's a loud this was like a a peacock. rick flair versus terry funk i oh, quit yeah. match oh my god like yeah oh and becky has become just a phenomenal heel the things she said to edge like don't break your neck when you exit my ring. Don't break yeah. your neck again. But she's you're exiting my ring. She's a beloved heel. She's Austin level yeah. over. She was the face, even though she was a heel. Everybody was behind Becky in this match. Um, best woman on woman chair shots I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, when they were just throwing the chairs yeah. in the ring, chair throwing competition. Love that. Oh, and the suplexes on the piles of chairs, and they're just barely getting away with this. Like you could briefly see. Charlotte tuck her head, you know, uh, uh, protect the fall with, with her elbow, yeah. but like just in the nick of time. So we couldn't, if, unless you're watching it in slow motion, you can't see it at all, you know? Um, but what got me, all right, after the match, there's a K Jewelers ad. Did you see the K Jewelers <laughs> I ad? I did not, but oh you were hyping this God. shit up. It was, so I'm exhausted, right? I'm shooken <laughs> up after this match and this <laughs> I mean, after dad. furiously masturbating oh, that much, I God. mean, you must have been exhausted. <laughs> after what? After I had my dick up my mom's cat's <laughs> vagina or something? Yeah. Oh, poor Lily. <laughs> How did that go? That's the worst thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> well, it's hard to see it when your dick's buried in her pussy. <laughs> this is a cat, a, a, a tabby, Lily Kins. Um, all right. Sorry. Edit that out. I don't even want to revisit that. You got to. I don't want to hear that again. So it's this guy, 
uh, talking to someone like uh, off camera, and he's like, "I just wanted to." Oh, get your I permission. did. I did see that. It's the. Uh, it's so touching. It's the son of yes his yes. Fiance. He was like, "I just wanted yes. to run this by you and get your permission first. I did and you see think that. you're talking. He's talking to, to her dad, dad, and it's this kid with just yeah. like this beaming smile. He's like, "No, I love you. This is so awesome. You're gonna marry my mom." I was done. I wept <laughs> myself to bed. It was like the most touching ad campaign. And I was just picturing the guy that wrote it was just like, yes. Like, he nailed it. He nailed it. That's the best ad I've seen in a long time. You're a single 35-year-old. And I related. Is, is that off the table for you? Um, Absolutely not. A woman not. with kids? Or Absolutely you're, you're not. I down think, to be stepdad. I think that's what was... I, I was so emotionally connected to that commercial because it's like I could picture myself... You know, it's this bearded white dude, too. You know? I mean, look... I'm on the wrong side of 30, man. A single woman around my age with without children, that ain't an option. They don't exist. Really. Some some do. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna... You went to uh, I, Halloween with one. Huh? Oh, yeah. No, what? She oh. has kids? No. Yeah, <laughs> oh, God damn it. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions I need to ask. Man, you. if you became a stepdad, Can I, edit I would this want episode, I would want the dad to be like Mark Wahlberg in the the Daddy's Home movies and I'd want you to have like a fierce rivalry with, with the, the bio dad. dad. That would be great. There's already tell me about it all the time. He's like in the Marine Corps. Yeah, you know? you're trying to set up the perfect Halloween right. and then he's like, "Oh, well I uh, actually know John Carpenter. No, I would. No, no, no. It wouldn't last long because I would have a heart to heart. I would imagine with the son, and I'd be like, "I am nothing. I am not half the man your father is." <laughs> like something like that. You know, it's like, don't you ever say that about your father again. I would be overly supportive. It's like, hey, you can call me Mike or Craig. Uh, but yeah, that's weird. Um, God, I wouldn't want that, man. You know, like. The fierce rivalry? No, just that idea of... Of being a stepdad? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So Do you think I'd you be good at You didn't identify it? with No, I did. I really didn't. I thought that's kind of the road I'm probably going to go down. You know, Were you crying because you're like, man, now I'm stuck doing this? No. I, there was a lot. I, maybe. There was a lot of subconscious things I th maybe that was hitting me hard because I, I, I cried. And usually it's a combination of emotions to get me to, to cry. So maybe I was thinking that, like, maybe this is the road I'm destined towards and i don't want it you know uh and, and maybe i just but this kid just with this beaming smile just so touching uh anyway do you think i'd be a good stepdad ryan hmm? i think it depends on the age of the kid you know yeah uh you're good with 16 you're good with younger kids i don't younger? know about you and a teenager no they'd resent me yeah probably. but you, but i would i wouldn't try to become their like dad. a seven-year-old uh, i think i think you would thrive yeah yeah definitely you and an older teen, I don't know. Depends on how independent and well together that kid is. Just going around life hiding my car from them. <laughs> if, he, if he's like oh, a... Turns out my stepdad drives a 2010 Toyota Corolla. Oh, it's not so bad. Thank you. It's not. The car's a great... Yeah, I just passed the smog check, and we are approaching 300,000 miles. Um, man, speaking of having an emotional reactions to shit on Halloween night. Like I was so busy. I didn't really get a chance to watch anything scary. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'm going to put on at least the first scene from it. Okay. That should do it. 1990. No, or the, 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 the newest one. That scene. Yeah. Well, without your boat. But yeah. I, no, don't go. I, I was going to kill you. And so when we saw it, I was not, I mean, uh, she was pregnant, I believe, and we were like, oh, we'll scare the baby out of her, oh. I think is what, because we all saw it together. Interesting right? strategy. And so we uh, <laughs> we, so, we all saw it together, <laughs> that w and okay. uh, I remember seeing that scene and being like, man, that's awesome. That's so cool. Hi, Watched it again, and I like wanted to cry. I was like, that poor boy. Poor, poor boy. His yeah. arm. His boat. He has no arm, and now he's dead. And that damn neighbor. Could have stopped everything. Yeah. But that's what's so amazing about that movie 
the there was no adult influence at all. Yeah. They were all just like they knew this clown took our kids and we just deal with it and we stay out of the way. We stay out of his way. You know, I was just I was pretty shook up by it Without as a boat? father. I was like, I can't Hi. believe that would happen to that poor kid. Hi, Georgie. Um, but yeah. Anyway, great match. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. We're still the, in my segment. The um, ending, the ending power bomb through the table. I I love that. Oh, this, yeah, uh, that Mwah. was incre- uh, pretty awesome. That the first uh, table spot didn't break on a moonsault from Charlotte. Yeah, and she's because like, that Fuck sets up that. this amazing Do it senton. Again. But yeah. just, it was a different move too, and just bah, right in the center, the figure eight utilizing the ladder was such an amazing. Image. Yes, yes, that's like Bret Hart level yeah. shit innovation. Yeah. That was beautiful, man. Did you see the Mike Kyoto spot though? He was like kicking a chair to to Becky because that was her way to break the hold, and the chair was too far. He just oh, I did not notice there that. Go. There's the chair. You He's a real master. Use it. But it was he did as as good a job as he could because. It was kind of like he was in no man's land, and unfortunately, the camera was right on him at the perfect angle. It, they should have cut away. The director yeah. should have had that wherewithal because he, first he stepped on it. Damn it, Kevin he st- Dunn. He stepped on it, and then it was like, I'm going to step on it, and then I'm going to drag it a little closer, and we saw the whole thing. That was the yeah. only flub. Um, God, nothing better than a good rubble burial, as you said earlier, with chairs. and. This was better than – I can't even think of any – Male last man standing match that was better. Oh, just can com- you compare it to the recent ones, you know, with men in their 40s and 50s? You know, absolutely not. And when you can hear her take her title, it's like this is when, when Lynch is like screaming, that's the only way you're gonna get my title, and then just wallops her. This yeah. is how you get my title when I wallop your face. I was just applauding, I, I was, I, I had a, 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 a reaction. Yes, uh, and this. that rarely happens when I watch Very wrestling. Very rarely. This is a uh, this is ten. Uh, highly recommend it for for anyone. Uh, ten out of ten. Uh, hit it. Um, yeah, I I watched that freaking crown jewel match, man. Do you think it's a coincidence that they had this event the a week after this all women's pay per view? They totally made this event because of this pay per view, and also just throw out Hulk Hogan. Let's just get it all done in one shot. That's so weird to me too. Is that they decided for him to come out of disgrace by attending an event that is a disgrace <laughs> yeah i know that's so weird and do you know what was really weird nobody said saudi arabia yeah all i knew they were they were that was yeah that was intentional that was bizarre yeah um not as much propaganda as the greatest royal rumble no and there were women in the audience there were women in the audience so as, as we mentioned at least renee young was there yeah i didn't God see what her. she was wearing Oh, um, she didn't look any... Well, she was sitting down the whole time. Yeah, but imagine the hoops that she had to jump through. Yeah. Um, I'll oh, say sorry, this it was just about Renee Young's the, decapitated head. I'll say this about the main event. The best part about it was that Undertaker left his straps up. Oh, yeah. And Undertaker looked not terrible. He Well, he, he left his straps up. Left his strap. Maybe that's why, because we didn't see his old... But he did look terrible. His old itty-bitty <laughs> ape titties. <laughs> old um, man ape titties. I've... Yeah. Shawn Michaels looked declare good. Declare Shawn Michaels looked good. He he looked... I mean, he looked good, but... Did you see at the beginning he was going for his bald head? Yeah, he's like, where's, where's my hair? Where's my hair? My hair's ah, gone. God, my hair. I'm old! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> like, this is real, like, um, revelation. From here on out, he is no longer the Undertaker. He is Mark Calloway. Okay. I, I will not that. call him the Undertaker anymore. I'm tired of this shit. I'm okay. tired of watching these matches. I'm tired of watching him huffing and puffing. Yep. It's enough. Triple H tore his pec uh-huh. in this match. He's got to get surgery. Great. The The two pedigrees he gave at the end were awful. god-awful because he couldn't move his arms because he tore his pec. Oh. Um. Shawn Michaels attempted a moonsault 
to and the outside. Oh, Did you that, see that was on Kane and the Undertaker. That yeah, was they on them. Totally blew they it. They blew it. They let Space that poor man fall on the ground to his had death. That bloody nose. I was like, you idiots. The yeah, both of you, seriously. not one of you. They blew it, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and and I'm way s- to protect a guy that hasn't been wrestling. And why in are we putting so Kane long. in this echelon of these legends here, though? Like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, Kane. What does he have the most matches of all time? You know, he's got longevity. So it was a big show. The, he was a. Uh, it was hot when Kane debuted. That was hot. That I was like all over that. You mm-hmm. can't stuff he did with Daniel Bryan was good. Yeah, yeah. Kudos yeah. to Daniel Bryan for saying fuck no. I'm not going to this shit. But it was same thing with John Cena. It was they both really, said no. Yeah, no. Oh, one, I we're know. Not going. I know. But it's unfortunate for the mid level card guys that just couldn't afford to say no. You know, like yeah. I feel feel for them because I'm sure a lot more of that roster was like absolutely not. But what was after this? Like journalist is murdered by Saudi agents and everything, and yeah, it's like. Here's what's so bizarre to me is they have this World Cup tournament for this thing where all these guys are going through that. There's qualifiers every week. They go through the tournament on the show. Mm -hmm. The finals are Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz. Yeah. The Miz says that he's injured at the first like two minutes of the match. They're going to call the match. And then Shane McMahon's like, no, we're not calling it. I've I'm, activated I'm, myself. I activated myself. <laughs> Dorn, it, that's not my bat. He goes in there with a tank top. He's got Vince McMahon attitude era level guns now. His yeah. arms are fucking huge. Yeah. No, I watched and, this match. Yeah, he wins the match. He doesn't participate in the tournament, but he wins the tournament. That was so bizarre. Then he goes on Twitter after the match and he congratulates his wife for producing this movie called a private war. Oh, she's a what's, producer on what's it. That movie, about? that movie's about, it's a true story about a journalist who was killed by the Syrian oh my government. God. He's tweeting this from Saudi Arabia. Wow. In the country of... that just killed an American journalist. Yeah. Just so, so Weird. bizarre on so many levels. It's just, isn't it like, like just kind of gross. Yeah. It's like, I, I just I don't even know how to react to it. I can't even think of and, a and time I where just admire this evolution pay per view for what it was and just yeah. this beautiful event where these it's women are just showcasing this. this empowerment and and what a phenomenal card it was and just like I I have never like I got my favorites now you know like Oscar I love you know like I have my my girls you know that I like and I don't like her as much. Just like me back in the '90s, you know, with with WWF in the in the new generation mostly, uh, um, uh, and then this squanders it. Yeah, he's a bad taste in my mouth. I know it's like uh, you got the return of HBK, but it's in this event, so it's like, oh, remember let, let that burger that you used to love? Mm-hmm. Let let's say like uh, you love In and Out Burger, which is true. But then you move to uh, wisconsin mm-hmm. and you haven't had one in years yeah you're coming back to cali yeah you're gonna get that yeah. in and out burger uh-huh. uh-huh but then they're like oh um the person that's gonna make this burger is a slave and you have to know Ooh. that you're eating something that a slave made for you and that person gets flogged every night and beaten <sighs> but enjoy your burger wow now here's the problem. You're you've already been waiting in that line for a while, right? Because yeah. they don't come up to you right away. You've been waiting since uh, the retirement match between Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker. Wow. <laughs> so and, they're like, here, serve this thing that you want. And wanted, here's the here's the other it's problem. Tainted. Here's the other problem. You're stuck, right? You yeah. can't go forward. You can't go backwards. There's a line of sex offenders <laughs> in front and behind you <laughs> in cars. And you're stuck, and you're moving forward. You're moving towards that destination, towards that burger. What do yeah. you do? You reach your hand out. You give it money. The money goes away. The burger is presented. You don't see this slave that prepared your burger, and you drive on home, and you eat it, and you choke on it, and you drink your milkshake, and you feel a little miserable about it yourself. But you did it. You didn't say no. Yep. You didn't drive away. You ate that burger. I know. And maybe we're at fault here or we're part of the problem. I mean, you, you kind of made me I watch I forced this. you to watch it in a weird um, way, and that must really resent you that I didn't end up watching it. I should have just like canceled my network s- subscription, but I don't want to because we're going series. to NXT in a yeah. few weeks. Yeah. So I kind of want to 
watch a few NXT episodes to kind of get caught up on all the story and it's stuff. It's fascinating, and, really. And I want to watch the event that we go to, like when I get home. And it's like I, I always want to just like that's it. I'm I'm done with the network. And then I'm like, well, I don't know if I, yeah. you know, what if I really want to watch and after King that of the Royal, Ring '93? Royal Rumble's coming up. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's hard. I, I have hard I've canceled it once. Thing. I've canceled it once, and and I I, I have briefly, two. and then they like gave me a deal to get like a few months free right. to and come back. And it was back. right around SummerSlam like 2017, yeah. and then I haven't canceled since, and I probably won't for for the foreseeable foreseeable future, especially because the Survivor Series, because I do wanna I want to delve into it. You know, I don't want to go in cold. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, we will be broadcasting live from the Staples Center at a restaurant we have not chosen yet. You got to start scouting, event. man. Yeah. Oh, right by the Nokia Center there. There's a million places. But a place that would be f- as friendly as Gorilla Mall was no. to us. Oh gosh, nothing but the best things to say about Gorilla Mall and the people of Gorilla Mall. As soon as we were done, called my mom because that's what I do when I do activities outdoors. I was like, I got to take you here. This is the coolest place ever. And, and, you know, again, as I said, Sunday afternoon in the fall, Royal Rumble 2005 was on the TV. Yeah. Not the freaking Packers and the, and the you know, another the Rams. football team. No, that was last week. Or that was last week, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, God, Rams got a couple tough ones coming up, man. Rams Saints and then Rams Chiefs. That'll be fun. They beat the Saints. Then, then they, they're a powerhouse. They'll go undefeated. I what, no, what the Chiefs are coming? Uh, yeah, what Chiefs about? are. It's in. See that they're an exciting, fun team, but they that have game their flaws. is weird because they're in Mexico City, so they're Ooh. both going to go into it at higher elevation. That's true. Traveling foreign country. Good point. It's going to be a weird game. They're both not going to be at full strength. Yeah, this Rams game this Sunday is a test. If they defeat, if they put up over thirty points, like they've been doing all. Freaking year! If they look the same, then they are as good as we. Over think they under are. on this game is sixty. Wow! Yeah, really? It's like a super high. Oh my god! I guarantee you, both teams going over thirty. No doubt in my mind. Yeah. Um, anyway. Well, god damn it! We watched next Friday. Yeah, number film number fifty eight of five thousand nine hundred ninety. Next Friday, starring Tommy Lister. Yep. Turn that frown upside down, man. Yeah, no, actually, I love like, this movie. I, it brought me back to when I watched this uh, by myself in back the theater. In the di- I oh, went, cool! Yeah, I went with like my parents to the the movies. They were taking my sister. She, this was two thousand. I think she was probably like seven or eight. Yeah, and I was I was at the age where it was like, uh, well, I don't want to watch. Uh, Toy Story. Oh, you guys split up or nice. whatever. Yeah. Okay, Can cool. I just like watch a movie I want to watch? And but they were what like, about me? I don't want to. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So they're like, sure. So what do you want to watch? That's like next Friday. Cool. And so what do you think I at that age? That. I loved it then. Love it was it now. still like, I mean, you know, it's still broadcast on, on network. TV. It's like on VH1 it's on all BT. week. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is great. I almost watched it on BET, but then I saw that it was censored, so I was like, I can't watch it. No, the yeah, there's version. no point. Although, they're, they're, I mean, just you know, Mike Epps' performance alone uh, still is funny today what, as it was then. Like, what there, there's not really much to to say about plot of this movie. Like, not and then nothing really the complex happens. It's a very simple. Oh, the plot film. doesn't make any sense at all. But like if, if, if sorry, if Debo well, is is scheduled for release, the Friday he, came out in ninety five. Well, he breaks out. Yeah, but yeah. in the opening monologue, he says, you know, Debo's scheduled release in four years. This movie takes place in two thousand. Friday is nineteen ninety five. So it's like what he couldn't wait a week. But like he was about to be is, released from prison. I so think why did this he have to escape? is the next Friday. Hmm. I. I don't think five years have passed in. I don't know. <laughs> no, because no, no, no. Has no. it no, been because that Smokey, long? Because Smokey went to. Oh yeah, to, no. Smokey I guess went to rehab. Smokey went to rehab like just that next that week. Oh yeah. Well, I then what happened to the girl? This is the on next Friday? Friday. I thought it was just yeah. like modern. Whoa. Just yeah, you're right flash. because yeah, I know. Uh, rolling blackout. Uh, you know, I noticed that he's acting a lot. I was like, God, this is kind of a role for like an 18 year old, not a 35 year old. Yeah, I know. And like, maybe that's why you need it was to get like a the job. next. And he's like, I still ain't got no job. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what the timeline is, but I was just, I, I thought the monologue said that he's going to be up for release. Like, I, f- 
now. I thought he said like where it is that uh, Debo broke out. And he's coming for him. He did say that after saying he's going to be released from prison. <laughs> like, oh. cause serve, because he just served four years. It made very little yeah, sense. Yeah, okay, well. Whatever, who cares? Whatever, yeah. We shouldn't analyze, overanalyze this because yeah. it's a simple, fun so movie. Craig There's... moves to Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, yeah. I used to live in Rancho Cucamonga. That's I right. I don't know if you knew that I didn't me. know that. <laughs> Why did you say that? That's right, you did, huh? <laughs> yeah, I lived there for quite some time. Really? What What yeah. year is this? I didn't know you were in Before Inland. I lived in Anaheim Hills. So what? So this is the cities I lived in. You ready? I'm ready. Arcadia. You were born in Arcadia. I was born in Duarte. Close enough. Lived in Arcadia. Okay. Moved to Rancho Cucamonga. It's a far move. Moved to Anaheim Hills. Stayed in Anaheim Hills. Stayed in Anaheim Hills. Fullerton. Then, yeah. Uh, Brea. Anaheim. Brea. Fullerton. Brea, Brea, yeah. Back to Anaheim Hills. Pomona. Nice. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Can I go? Um... Can I yeah. go? Can I go? Oh, okay. Villa, Villa Park. Park. Fullerton. Fullerton. Long Beach. Long, uh, Villa Park. Fullerton. Cyprus. Oh, I forgot about Long Cyprus. Beach. <laughs> Back to Villa Park. <laughs> uh, L.A. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's fun. Yeah. Rancho Cuc- Like, they kind of... They actually did film in Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. Yeah. I looked that up. Um, Can you get a house for yeah. $250,000 these days? Probably it's not. probably way more expensive now. Um, it was, was it? A, it was an okay place to live. I'll tell you what. I was surrounded by rednecks, man. Really? Surrounded by like NASCAR loving. Because I, I never rednecks. No offense. Mullets. But, yeah, I thought I, so. One of my friends, uh, his I name. I mean, you're was, out in uh, freaking Indio for God's sakes. It's not Indio. All right. It's Rancho Cucamonga is. Okay, like compare it to Temecula. 10 miles away from here, just straight down the 10. Yeah. It's not that far. Okay. How far is Fontana? Fontana is uh, the next city east of Rancho Cucamonga. How far is up? Rancho up Cucamonga way? is where the 10 meets the 15. Okay. It's the next city so over we're from a lot Ontario. Closer than I thought. So we're Pomona, Ontario, Rancho right. Cucamonga, Fontana. And then Temecula is further south then. South. Yeah. Temecula west, east, is. Southeast. Way far away from Rancho okay. Cucamonga. All right, um, that's right. So it's like, yeah, I was. If, if, if you're if you're heading to Palm Springs, you made a dent. If you when you hit Rancho Cucamonga, if you're headed to Palm Springs from L.A., sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, my friend that lived a few houses down from me that I would always play over the line with. Ooh, his mom had a mullet, man. His well, stepdad loved NASCAR. Wow. People like when freaking uh, you played over the line. Yeah, I used to play over. That the doesn't line. seem like a game you would enjoy. I loved it. I yeah. used to play over the line with you when I you know. lived in Fullerton. I know, and but I you, all it. you do is hate on baseball. But I like playing over the line play because pepper? it's actually fun. Yeah, it's not like watching it. I've fucking we tried. Had, I tried to watch that Dodger game, man. Oh, that was that was just lasted all night. I I got into maybe like inning sixteen. Fell asleep. No, okay. Well, that's Woke a up, bad and they example. were they were celebrating. No, I was watching that and I was just like, oh, this is why people hate baseball, huh? Yeah, no, that was terrible. Oh. Um, but our, we had like a variation on over the line, kind of, you know, because we had yeah. we had we had the uh, th- third person implementation. That was some of the funnest times of my life, man. Playing that. Yeah, I used to love playing. Uh, every summer we would play like that's cool. every day uh, with a tennis ball. Wow, so you really relate to this movie? Do you recognize? So of course you recognize a lot of the. Did you? Was there, there weren't a, was any there a landmarks. Uh, re- that, there was <laughs> no pinkies. Shop. No, there that was, was a great not scene. a lot of landmarks I recognize. But like Rancho Cucamonga is kind of like an L.A. suburb where like people just want to get a nice house and get the fuck out. Of right. There's the city. distance. Yeah. yeah there's so some distance. perfect setting. For, yeah. For that. Um, yeah. Fish out of water. Uh, I wouldn't nice live there recap. now, but. I it, it wasn't a bad place to live. It was, was safe. Uh-huh. All the houses looked the same. There's nothing wrong with that. Although I'm a glutton for them craftsman homes that are yeah. very unique. That's I'd why, rather that's why I love I your now. neighborhood. Yeah. Your, they, each house has such crazy. There's such History diversity and character. And, and character. Yeah, there's a, each yeah. house has its own personality, which is which is awesome. Yeah. Um, we get a nice recap in the beginning. I had totally forgotten what Kinda happened. Kind of remind to me of Smokey. Halloween too, in a way. Just kind of like pick up where yeah. like as uh, 
uh, Debo, Zeus, is knocked out. Yeah, but it's four years later. I'm positive. Okay. Like, well, I could be wrong. I guess I'll watch it again. Um, and I, I was have, wondering what happened to Smokey because I forgot. And I was like, I wonder if they even mentioned it. it was like, it's yeah, weird yeah. because, like, um, he actually, like, he kind of, I feel like he thought he was too big for this. But then I looked it up, and I guess he became a born-again Christian. I thought that, yeah, they just couldn't afford And so afford he was him. like, I'm just going to do the Rush Hour movies because they're wholesome. Oh. And he didn't really do anything after Rush Hour that was risque. No. But when was Fifth Element? That was 96. So that was after Friday. Yeah. But I, I, it I said just thought he was after too he big. made that movie Money Talks. Uh-huh. That's when he became a born again. Oh Christian. wow! I had I yeah. had no idea. I always I just thought it was a money thing. This movie didn't really need him though. It's I, just a stripped down he, version. Yeah. And Mike Epps Mike was Epps awesome. Took up took up the the role and he ran with it. Ran with it. Yeah. the The characters in this movie are what make this movie great. Mike Mike Epps and the uncle. Yeah. I love the uncle was so funny. I don't know yet when he's he? like right. I live in Racho Chukamonga. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, I wonder if he really just couldn't, yeah, couldn't say it. Say, and yeah. they're like, just keep it in. It's, it's it too like, funny. How'd you, how'd you pick them six winning lotto, <laughs> lotto numbers? Oh, your late aunt picked them. <laughs> I, think it, I think it was a weight. <laughs> <laughs> and then had the hooker from Curb Your Enthusiasm that just she, wanted. I love her so yeah, much. She's and so good. I thought Baby D, who they, they you know, had taught as this like, you know, overweight, obese monster. I thought she was like, I was like, that's the kind of girl I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> like, wasn't she beautiful? Like, oh. she was okay looking. Yeah. Um, I got, I found like a pretty okay. interesting all, like, fact about Tiny jokes. Lister that I thought I'd throw in. Okay. On August 31st, 2012, Lister agreed to plead guilty to conspire, conspiring to commit mortgage fraud in a scheme that led to 3.8 million in losses. He was charged with fraudulently buying homes in order to withdraw $1.1 million in home equity loans. As of 2014, he was out on bail and confident at avoiding prison. He stated, what's so cool about God and our government is that you can make a mistake and they will forgive you if you are just a good person and doing right. Wow. Yeah. You got to be kidding me. What year is this again? 2012. Jesus Christ. I got a tiny Lister story that doesn't involve me at all, but it involves, it's actually a story of a coworker. Okay. By the way, like I, every once in a while, I'll mention like the movie we're doing at work and then like, huh, well, yeah, yeah. we're out of toilet paper. Oh, well, let me go get some then. That's kind of my, my <laughs> that's, your thing. that's kind of my thing that I do. <laughs> um, but they, a lot of the girls resonated with this movie. Like everyone loves oh, this yeah. movie. Like and not and I was made it specifically. I, I made it clear. Like next Friday, not Friday. I mean, I know you say bye Felicia all the time. Not that one, right? Like no, I love them both. So it really, really resonated uh, uh, with them. And I don't know. Oh yeah, okay. So a coworker. This led to a story. Uh, his friend, right, wrote a Taco Bell across the street from USC, and his friend was like, "Hey, D'Lo," and he walks up to him. And he's like, "If you're gonna say it, then you better say it right." And Debo. they just walked off. Yeah. And they horrified the guy. And uh, it's a great story. Oh, man. Can I please edit this one myself? I got so much. I would just, I never want to see the light of day. I don't want Victor <laughs> to hear me like this, man. I, I had a, like a dry martini earlier and it's hitting me. And I just, I'm really low energy. I apologize, man. I just love Mike Epps' reaction to them watching him get his car keyed. He's like, you just stand just there and hugging. And Ice Cube, <laughs> just, oh, Ice Cube is such a little butt. <laughs> like when he hopped up on the hood just to avoid the dog. Like he didn't yeah. have to descend Dented the car like the that by like by butt slamming it. <laughs> yeah. it like what the fuck, dude? Swear <laughs> jar. Like he was like, and he was whipping the belt intentionally trying to hit the car. Like what a brat. Like he's a bad <laughs> friend or family member. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mike Epps. Like, yeah, he's a he's the MVP of this film. Or the, uh, when they're or looking the main, at the jacuzzi, the main show, yeah, the uncle. Pretty, I don't know how to swim. Maybe pockets his condom. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> so he's like gross. And like as if like, he's going to reuse can use it. this if you want to. And it's like, is he talking about the jacuzzi, the jacuzzi? or the condom? Because because <laughs> he said no, and then he pockets the condom. He's like, all right, suit yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he immediately he takes the the chlorine out <laughs> and just pockets it. 
There's some wonderful moments. You just can't live in that. So much racism in this movie, though. Oh, good lord! Seriously, a, black the, on the Mexican, guy with white like the, on black, the black turban. On, yes, oh. yeah, black, black on Middle Eastern. Yeah, he was like, yeah, say hi to Gaddafi for me. Yeah, <laughs> like good lord. The cholos are pretty funny though. The main cholo guys. Yeah, that with was the dog. He was yeah, he was great. Yeah, he was awesome. So like, don't, don't call me stupid. I'm sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roach was uh, all right. Did you know that uh, Roach committed suicide? I did. That yeah, was actually like a, my fun like fact. that year um, in, in Las death Vegas. By hanging in Las Vegas. July 10th, 2000. He was like 25 years old. Poor guy. Yeah, really. Yeah. He was great. And I like that he was like, oh, I'm on a bad, I'm on a bad trip, you guys. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can relate to that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> I love how he bonded with... Uh, <laughs> what's the matter, man? You what's bust the name your shit? Of the, what's the name of the dog? Wow. <laughs> I don't remember. Chico? Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah, right. He bonded, yeah, and because he, he fed him all that bologna. And the pot brownie. And the pot brownie, and they were just hanging out together, like, I'm connecting with you, man. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, and was Chico a, connected on a, a really beautiful level. Does he get the girl, though? She was definitely smitten with him. Yeah, but then sure. he, moves, said, he moves right back to South Central, though. But he, he could still beep her. She she's He was like, should I beep you 69? And That's she was true. like, 68. 68. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But then a lot of other stuff happened after that. So maybe I just maybe they should just have that scene last. I don't know. I think... Yeah, I think right. he'd like call her up for a booty call if once and if he this gets, is the if he ever gets a car and a job. <laughs> if this is the next week, as you say, what happened to the girl in the first movie, man? Like, what the heck is going on here? Um, isn't it weird how in movies, like somebody's house is always up for auction? That's like a a trope that's like all the time. Like, we got to save their house. Yeah, I know. It's going up for auction. It's a good next one. Week. It makes sense. I guess it's it's simple. Um, there's a ticking clock there, yeah. and it involves we need to generate money. So Damn what's property a, taxes? Yeah, man. what's a way to generate a lot of money in a short amount of time? That's one of the, the you know that's yeah. an instance. But yeah, they do it all the time. Yeah. Um, I loved Pinky, by the way, man. When Pinky, that was like ahead of its time. Yeah, that when, was like something you'd see <laughs> yeah. in Atlanta. Like that character yeah. was awesome and when he was like Holy i got a i got a girlfriend man yeah, and a just, wife on the side <laughs> <laughs> i completely forgot about that part that's the be, that's the best part yeah. of the movie right that's such a well-written line i got a girlfriend and a wife, <laughs> a wife on, the on the side, side. it's like <laughs> yeah wait a minute what a player oh man and then when when he was like i got a little scared for a minute but i hope i held my own i held my own what an I don't know who that actor was, but he yeah. was asked to do a lot because he goes from aggressive, holding someone up at gunpoint, to being a victim, to then yeah. just firing everybody. <laughs> it's like three <laughs> wide, broad ranges of emotion. <laughs> it's like mad, yeah, to horrified, to pissed. Yeah, it's a fun movie. I give it a seven point four. Yeah, I give it a seven point eight. Uh, we already hit fun, my simple, accessible action moments. We hit my Chris Tucker fun fact. Okay. We hit my Roach fun fact. Okay. Um, the only other one I have, and then we talked about my Tiny Lister fun fact. Oh, here's one. Yeah. They talked about um, punching him to get his eyes uh, uncrossed. Yeah. He's actually blind in his right eye. Oh. <laughs> didn't know that either. Yeah. But they use there that. You at go. <laughs> and uh, only four characters from the original ball. Friday appear in this. Craig, Mr. Jones, Debo, and Stanley. Right. Yeah. Um, Do you remember we... Friday After Next? I actually never saw it. Really? Is I've it seen good? it once. I've seen it once. Is it good? I don't remember. I remember it was Christmas themed, but I, yeah. I can't even answer that. Mike Epps is in it, though, right? If Mike Epps is in it. I don't think it, he is. He's not? I don't think I he think is. I think he is. I think it's just oh, maybe. I mean, that's just how long I know. I know. I think... I think Cat Williams is in it. John Witherspoon's in, in it. And is he not the greatest comedian at like sniffing the air? Uh, <laughs> like he's been put yeah. on this planet You're to like, perfect. Oh, it felt like shit. I smell <laughs> shit. <laughs> he's been put on this planet. <laughs> to just smell we were duty. graced by God to smell duty. <laughs> What's that smell? <laughs> to react to duty and to duty himself. <laughs> like that's his bread and butter. Um, I'll flick chart it. Flick chart? It is not yet on my flick chart. So okay. is it better than Zombieland? No. Zombieland has that the Bill, Bill Murray, Murray scene. Part. Do you have any regrets, Garfield? <laughs> okay, you you sold me. Cool. Zombieland is better. Lucky number eleven. Ah, next Friday. Next Friday. Joan Rivers, a piece of work. The documentary. Oh, the documentary, which was good. That was very good. 
I'm, I'm going to go with next Jonah. Friday. Okay. All right. That was a great, like, her just overworked because of that pinky man, line. Her man. overwork assistant was just like. The pinky line. Okay. Donna the Dead. Donna? Which one? The original. <laughs> don't even ask me that. Come on. I know that you love it. I don't like it that much, but. Too slow? It's very slow, but. The blood was too orange. Cinematic was the blood too history. Orange for you? Come on. Cinematic history. I'll pick Donna. It's a beautiful the Dead. story. And what it, what the, the Brothers, message of consumerism. The film with Tobey Maguire and Jake Gyllenhaal. Never Have you seen that? Never seen it. It's pretty good, actually. Okay. So my vote does not count on this one. I think it's a vi- it's my Danny bi-week. Villeneuve. Oh, if it's a Villeneuve. Oh. Well, you got to give it to the Villeneuve. It might be. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> Villeneuve. Uh, no, I'm still on pick next Friday. Okay. <laughs> cool. Florence Foster Jenkins. This came out a couple years ago with Meryl Streep. Have you seen this? No. It's a fucking good movie, actually, yeah. man. Um, she plays. No, she's what's like wrong a socialite, right? Um, that funds like the arts in New York. Like she just has all this money. Yeah. And she just just throws money at like the opera and stuff in, in New yeah, York. Yeah, I've heard of this. And yeah, she yeah. somebody convinces her. She takes voice lessons all the time. She's horrible. Somebody convinces her that she should be a singer oh. and she should like perform at the Met. Okay. And everybody's like, oh shit. She's like, how are we going to lie rib? to her? Because she funds our lifestyles. Oh. Like, how are we going to not hurt her feelings? Wow. She's horrible. Crazy. Uh, it's actually a very there. good movie. All right, and I'm going to have to pick that over next okay. Friday. Cool. Wow. I want to, I am, I would like to see it. Network. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pick Network. <laughs> Mad Max, nineteen seventy nine, um, not not Mad, the Road Warrior, which is Mad like Max. the one that everybody loved. Mad Max Mad, was solid. The you first know, Mad the Max. first Mad Max was solid. Non apocalyptic. Like, you can you can uh, cut through the chain in ten minutes, or you can cut through your leg in five, or something like that. Argo. Argo. Argo was really good. Alice in Wonderland, Tim Burton version, twenty ten. Next Friday. I, I'd agree. Come on, Tim Burton. Do something better. Yeah. It's number 793 on my flick chart. There you go. Just between Argo and Alice in Wonderland. Have your Has your top 10 been altered at all? I don't think so. Okay. Um. All right. Now I present you with the urn, sir. Oh, it's my turn to draw. It's your turn. Filled with the Make souls of professional wrestlers. In feature film... My selection is Repossessed. Ooh, is that another spoof? Yes. Yeah. Jesse Ventura and Mean Gene, I think, are in there. There we go. <laughs> oh! Thanks, Ern. All right. Nah, I'm okay with that choice. You know it's at least probably right. going to be like an 80-minute movie. I forgot to look something up to, for my sign-off, so I'm Ryan the Muffler Bruckner saying I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. I love it. I love it, man. And I'm Mike Big Tobacco Ryan. Charlotte is risen.